Uh, Professor Eberhorn um, lives in London. Uh, well, not lives in London, he's a professor in London here at uh, South Bank University. And he is a member um, of a uh, COVID-19 relief uh, UK and Europe, which I co-chair. And so it's very interesting the question he's raised. Um, we are in our own little way doing things, including him and trying to do this. So I think the key really is collaboration. We need to collaborate uh, with professionals like you who are in the forefront and um, I hasten to add that. That's what we're doing at Nigeria Magazine, um, creating awareness, bringing stakeholders together to um, deal with this very serious issue. Like Dr. Folari said, it's not going to go away. Um, so we better get used to doing things properly. And it's not a blame game because the United Kingdom, America, um, I've all found uh, wanting. No, no, nobody can come out and smell like roses in, in all this. There have been issues of uh, lack of capacity, uh, surprisingly, in the so-called uh, developed nations. So that's fact. So the lessons we that hopefully anyone can learn from this is to work collaboratively together. And I have to say that, um, yes, at Nigeria Magazine, that's what we are doing. And this is what it's about. And so I needed to just uh, let who, uh, Professor know and others who are listening that, yes, it's a good suggestion. And I'm sure that um, we will uh, continue to do what we do to tackle this very serious issue. Thank you very much. Once again, I appreciate the Nigeria Magazine for giving me this opportunity to make this presentation on behalf of um, African Center of Excellence for Genomics of Infectious Diseases. Uh, the uh, one thing I want to just say is uh, our leaders need to change. If we're able to convince our leaders about vaccine, I'm sure that the reception would be would go a long way. One of the things that happened at my center when they asked what the forefront uh, front line workers was when the vaccine came, most of our team members didn't want to get the vaccine. But seeing the director and myself as a deputy director take the vaccine, then everybody, you won't believe it, everybody at the end of the day took the vaccine. So everybody in my center now have taken the vaccine just because they were convinced that if the leaders are in the forefront and they are ready to go for it, then it means that it's meant for good. So if our leaders are ready to accept this vaccine, I'm sure all the followers too will do. Thank you very much. Just a few points. I think that COVID-19 has taught us that our fates are tied. What one person does affects another. If you don't wear a mask, it's, you know, that's your own decision. But unfortunately, your decision has an impact on your neighbor. You know, and I think with the same thing you can say with vaccines and how countries are doing that. So we're now a global community. There's no longer one nation by itself. We are all our countries. And I hope in Nigeria, we know that there's no one tribe or one state, right? Our, our fates are all tied. The good of one is the good of all. The health of one is the health of all. So I think if we have that approach to how we deliver health services, how we combat pandemics, then we will all, you know, benefit from that. And I think in, you know, we've also talked about uh, collaborations um, as well. Second thing is don't feel that there's nothing you can do to combat this pandemic. I think there's the false sense that it's scientists and doctors and researchers. You know, I think uh, Anthony also mentioned very astutely how sometimes the messengers and the, the people who listen to in the community mm -hmm. are their pastors and other people. They tend to trust those sources more than us established uh, unfortunate experts, right? And so I think we all have to carry that message about just the great advances that science has delivered to us and how we can make a difference um, within our communities, within our homes, families, you know, whatever, you know, workplaces, whatever place you have as a sphere of influence, you know, by being that personal example and that trusted messenger um, within your own community. And uh, lastly, I'll just say, you know, everybody get vaccinated. Um, it's community immunity is what everybody's saying nowadays. We can, we need herd immunity to get rid of the virus, which means I get my vaccine, you get yours. And if we get it, we can even, uh, you know, be able to get rid of the pandemic and protect the few people who don't get the vaccine. First, uh, to say thank you to Nigeria Magazine uh, for the invitation. Uh, thank you to 
uh, Professor Folani and Professor Boago uh, for being part of today. Uh, I have learned a lot. Uh, to the attendees, uh, you've taken time out. I believe at least you would have taken one thing that you can take away home and to tell people around you there are people in your sphere of influence that you can share what you've taken from the positive things you've taken from today's uh, session. And I think the main message is this, the, the virus is real. We can't run away, it's not going away. And the vaccination program is successful. So when you have the opportunity to receive the vaccine, please, please go for it. Yes, we hear what Anthony has said about the community leaders. Uh, steps are being made to do that. Uh, during my talk, I said I had spoken to faith groups and different groups, cultural groups, uh, and we will continue to do it. But my parting word will please stay safe. The virus has not gone. The variants are coming back. So let's continue to remain safe. And uh, that would be my advice to each and every one of us. Thank you very much to everyone. Let me start with uh, Dr. Folari for um, participating and giving us, uh, I learned a lot about genomics and uh, the good work you're doing from the Ebola stage till now and uh, complimented obviously by um, your uh, boss, if I may say, uh, Christian Happy and uh, extend our greetings to him for at least uh, cooperating and allowing you to come and um, give uh, such an important talk and we really appreciate it. Uh, it's put uh, Nigeria on the map, I won't just say the Ocean State, but it has uh, shown that great things are coming out of Nigeria. And again, let me also thank very much uh, Dr. Bagbo, who is a very busy man. Um, uh, for him to sacrifice two hours of his busy, the last time we spoke, actually, I think he was just coming out from the hospital and staying in the car to even speak to us. So that shows the commitment that you have. Uh, we thank you very much. Um, what uh, most people don't know is that you're doing a lot of great work, actually, not just in America, in Liberia and Rwanda, and you're also using Nigerian resources to help uh, the people in uh, Liberia and Rwanda. And so let me thank you for that selfless uh, work you're doing. It is not easy. And of course, uh, Professor Jai Simi, who wears several hats, is a... Uh, uh, somebody who is not just a medical doctor, but also uh, a lawyer. And so can uh, combine both and, and do so many things uh, to help the cause. And he's speaking from a practical uh, viewpoint to say, I have had it and this is what I've done. And then um, like every other event, let me also thank uh, our supporters, uh, Mepon, and so many other things, uh, Trojan, if I may remember that, the Nigeria, UK diaspora uh, doctors that uh, uh, Dr. Professor Jaisi may also belong to, that, that was quite uh, helpful that you supported this program. And I've looked through the chat, there have been so many questions there. And the gentleman that last spoke is uh, Anthony, he's also a medical doctor here in the UK who has been also very helpful in, in, in our discussions on all this. And um, we'll continue this conversation. Um, we are open to collaboration, like I said. And our next event actually is a couple of weeks from today, which is on a totally different subject that, that, that's really remittance, but it's all COVID related with um, what is happening now. We cannot run away from COVID. It's come and has radically changed uh, the way we do things uh, globally. I mean, there, there, there's no escaping. Um, yes, we have to keep that voice to fix our healthcare system. COVID does not discriminate. 